Hey guys and girls, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about loops and how to keep your loops in sync with the clock. To get started, I'm first going to create a script inside of server script service and delete this first line here. And I'm now going to create a simple loop. And inside of this loop, I'm going to wait for one second. And I'm also going to print the current clock time. So print os.clock. So if I play the game, we can see that every second it prints the current clock and we can see it goes from 50 to 51 to 52 to 53. But we can also see that the milliseconds are slowly increasing over time. And that is because of inaccuracies of the wait function. And we should also notice that once this hits 99, it skips a second. So if I stop the game, we can see it went from 74 and it skipped 75 and it went to 76. And we can see here it was 99 and it went all the way down to zero. I've now added some random code into the loop. And what we should notice is this code affects our weight because to execute this code takes some time. And because we're waiting one second on top of this code, it will increase the amount these milliseconds will increase. So if I play the game once again, we should notice that these milliseconds are increasing a lot quicker now than they were before. And we can see that we're skipping seconds much more frequently than we were before. So let's rewrite this loop so that these lines of code do not affect our weight. So I'm first going to create a function called loop. And I'm going to call this function. And inside of this function, I'm going to copy and paste this code and at the very bottom, I'm going to call the function again so that it keeps looping over and over and over again. But we still have the same problem because executing these two lines of code takes a small amount of time. So instead of calling the function at the very bottom after we've waited for all this to finish, we can make these lines of code not be affected by using the delay function. So if we use task.delay and we say wait for one second and then call the loop function. Now I can delete these two lines of code down here. So as soon as we call the loop function, we add the loop function to the scheduler to be executed after one second. So anything we do after we've called this function has no effect on this one second delay. So if I play the game once again, we can now see that we're more closely in sync with the clock and these milliseconds are only increasing by a very small amount like we first showed when we created a empty loop. But if we want our loop to be perfectly in sync, what we will need to do is subtract these milliseconds from this one second here so that we wait perfectly for the next second. So to extract these milliseconds from the clock without receiving these seconds at the front, what I can do is say local clock equals OS clock, and then I can say local offset equals clock 
negative math dot floor clock. It's also possible to use the modulus function to get this offset value. So to do it with using the modulus operator, what we do is local offset equals OS clock modulus one. If you're unsure how the modulus operator works, I have a video on my channel called Modulus Operator that goes into more detail of how this operator works. So I'm going to delete this method of getting the offset and use the modulus operator method of getting the offset. And now I'm going to subtract the offset from this one value. So I'm going to say one negative offset. And if I play the game once again, we should now see that we're increasing by one second and the milliseconds stays at zero, 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 zero and never increases and perfectly stays in sync with the clock. But if we want our loop to run at a different interval, for instance, let's say every five seconds, what I can do is create a local variable called loop delay and set it to five. And instead of waiting for one second, I'm going to wait for the loop delay, which is five. And I'm going to divide the clock by loop delay and at the very end, times the offset by loop delay. And if I run the game once again, we should now see that we're perfectly in sync with zero and five. Zero, five. And we can also see that our milliseconds are always at zero. It's also possible to use point values as our loop delay. So I can set this to 0 0.5 and play the game. And we can see that the milliseconds are perfectly in sync with 0, 5, 0, 5. And each second is being called twice. I'm now going to delete these random lines of code and I'm going to reduce 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. And if I play the game, we'll notice that we're not able to keep up with this very small loop delay. So we went from 80 to 82, so it skipped 81. And then from 82, it skipped 83 and went to 84. And the reason this happens is because task delay relies on the player's frame rate. So if the player's frame rate is 60 per second, we can work out that 1 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.01. And that is the minimum amount of time if the player's frame rate is at 60 that this task delay will be able to wait before it calls the loop function. So now let me show you how you can have a very low loop delay that stays in sync with the clock. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the run service. And then I'm going to assign a function to the heartbeat event. So run service dot heartbeat connect function. And I'm going to remove this function call and I'm going to remove these two lines of code here. So we just have a simple function that prints the clock. And I'm going to create a new variable called total time 
and set it to zero. Now this delta time value is going to tell us how much time it took from the previous heartbeat event to the current heartbeat event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment total time by the delta time. And then what I'm going to do is say while total time is greater or equal to loop delay do and I'm going to subtract loop delay from total time so total time negative equals loop delay and I'm going to call this loop function Now in order to demonstrate that this function is working correctly, I'm going to change the loop delay back to one and play the game. And we can see that it's looping once every second. And we should see that the milliseconds stay perfectly the same every time. So the way this works is each frame, the heartbeat event is fired. And if the frame rate is at 60 per second, then delta time should have a value roughly 0.016. And this value is being added to the total time. And then we're looping and each in every loop we subtract the loop delay from the total time. So if we had a loop delay of 0.001, it would have to loop 16 times to get this total time to be equal less than loop delay. So in order to test this, I'm going to first comment out this print function, and I'm going to simply print delta time and run the game. And we can see that the delta time is around 0 0.016, but we can also see that it slightly fluctuates around this value. So now let's count how many times this loop function is called. So I'm going to create a new variable called amount equals to zero. And I'm going to increment the amount inside of the loop. And at the end, I'm going to print the amount. So with a loop delay of 0 0.001, we should see that an amount of 16 should be printed every frame. So let's play the game. And we can see that the loop function gets called around 16 times every frame. So now we can have a loop delay as low as we like, and we should have this loop function be called the correct amount of times every frame. So even with a low value like this, if I play the game, we can see that the loop function is being called the correct amount of times to compensate for the delay of each heartbeat. Thank you for watching my video, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.